much for watching. Thank you. My name is Jane Roy. Welcome to this week's edition of The Paint Box. I'm here with a good friend of mine, Karen Pincombe. Hi, Jane. Hi, Karen. Karen, you are officially the director, the, the coordinator of Arts for All Kids. Yes. Yes. I'm the founder, co-director of the program. Amazing. I mean, wonderful. Can you tell me a little bit about what Arts for All Kids actually is? Arts for All Kids is an org a volunteer-run organization, so everybody is a volunteer, and we provide free fine arts lessons to kids whose families cannot afford lessons of any kind. Um, so we're kind of for those kids who fall between the cracks, and we, our parents would desperately love to give the kids this opportunity, but the family budget, there's no way that these extras are they can do for the kids so yeah and you've been running this program for how many years <laughs> we've completed 34 years we're going into our 35th year that, that's totally wonderful yeah i mean and when you think about it you are seeing about 75 kids 65 well our, our yeah. highest number that we took which was a little insane was 85 kids a night and every kid gets two lessons so we're doing anywhere from 130 to 165 lessons a night um, and you're partner with the food bank. We're actually at the food bank right now. Uh, we're in the art room, and in a little while, we'll we'll walk around okay. a little bit and see some of the um, okay. see some of the spots. Um, but why the food bank, and why here? Uh, that goes right to the beginning, and you you know that um, this idea, what Arts for All Kids is today, is I never dreamed of. Um, but I had a summer job when I was much younger. Um, you're working. still pretty young, Karen. <laughs> So. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet to lie. Um, um, and I was a music director at a camp that catered to underprivileged, underserved kids. And I worked, it was with the Salvation Army. And my job was the music director. And 100 kids would arrive, 100 kids who um, families were financially strapped, who would never go to camp. And my job was in the six or seven days that they were at the camp was to prepare them for the final day when they would put on a musical. Um, and I did it for four weeks, so I saw 400 kids. And, um, but they were four weeks of transformation for me mm -hmm. as I watched these kids come in and they would troops off the bus and there was, you know, some kids were pushing and shoving and swearing and you could tell they were afraid. And, but we also did a, um, a talent night once uh -oh. a week. <laughs> and the kids were- <clears throat> hey, Did you, you participate know. in it as well? Well, not directly. But the kids loved to imitate yeah, me. Yeah. Um, I had a bell and a Michael Jackson glitter glove. And so some kid would get a hold of my glove and be dinging the bell like crazy. Yeah. And, but the kids sang and they were comedians and they danced. And there was just a phenomenal amount of raw talent and 100% of I love this. And So that transformed you? It did because... Yes. Every night on the talent night, I happened to have the privilege of working in this job with my university roommate, who we were very good friends. And every night I was in tears, every talent mm -hmm. night, because I went, they are going to go home in a couple of days to nothing. Mm -hmm. And I also had a greater appreciation for my parents. So there were five kids in my family. We all got piano lessons. Mm -hmm. My brothers got hockey. I did not want to play hockey, sorry. Um, dance. And I realized that, and it was a single income. And I'm like, what my parents had to go through to ensure that we had those kinds of opportunities, whether they were sports or arts. And I realized that these kids had no opportunity. So when I returned home, um, we were friends. You and Glenn and Brian and myself and a number of other people. And I couldn't stop talking about these kids. I, they, they had grabbed my heart. And so it was actually Glenn that said, would you stop talking about this and just do something? And I'm like, but what am I going to do? Like, I, I, cause they said, wouldn't it be great if they could put on shows and they could do the props and the scenery and then we could make it an all arts thing. And then I'm like, but where do you do that? And he said, we'll do it in the food bank. Well, these are the early days of the food bank. So the food bank was very small. Yep. And um, one of my friends said, I'll do it with you. So we moved my grandmother's piano into the basement and we just started what we called the piano club. And I just spoke to families, again, on Glenn's 
recommendation, just ask the families if they have kids and they age. So we ended up, the first few families said, no, why would I want to do that? Um, but then we had six families who wanted to give their kids piano lessons. So my friend would be upstairs singing and doing theory games, and I would have three little bums on a bench in the basement amongst the boxes of food. Yep. And, um, um, and interestingly enough, all six kids were families new to Canada. Yeah. So part of our job, too, was to help them with English. And, and also, I had a couple of parents say, my child hasn't smiled since we arrived until now. Yeah. Um, within a year, we had 25 kids. And we had offered other things. And we moved out of the, temporarily moved out of the food bank um, to a church down the street who wonderfully gave us um, space. And then all of a sudden, I had someone phone me. And she said, I'm a poet and I would like to teach her kids poetry, but I only want to do it for six months. And in my head, I thought, poetry? Which was, and so I said, sure, why not? So the kids loved her. She would come through the door and that the poetry lady is here and run up the stairs. And, um, and she was fabulous. They were doing incredible things. They were doing things that opened up to us how difficult their lives were too. Mm -hmm. And then someone came in and said, I'm a visual artist. And I'm like, so I, I just went, oh, okay. And then we started redesigning it. Um, Brian, yep, who's so. now my husband, um, came on side in that time and said, I really want to do this with you. Um, he's been stuck with me ever since. Yep. Um, and yes. so he came to teach piano. Yep. And then, all, then we moved back into the food bank space. And we ended up with somebody who wanted to teach creative writing and dance. And all of a sudden, we were a multidisciplinary group. And we renamed the program Arts for All Kids. Yeah. And so not only have you got, over the past 30, 35 years, all of those kids and all of those disciplines, um, you know, the backbone of, of what you do are all of the volunteers that come. Yes. You know, and yeah. a lot of those are coming, a lot of those people are coming, want to, some of them are professionals and some of them are students, yeah. are they not? So you've yeah. obviously seen and made an impact on so many people across London. Well, and I appreciate that. It was one of the lessons we learned that we were not expecting is that people who love the arts do not necessarily have somewhere to volunteer. And the number of volunteers who have said, I've been looking for something like this to share what I love, mm -hmm. whether they are a pro or not. And um, we had no idea that we would have an impact on that side. So, and then we have people who are don donors who are yep. say, I don't have it, I love this. And so we, we see it as um, there's a vast group of people who are involved to make this happen for the kids. And the kids have no idea. Um, they see the volunteers, but they don't know other people who provide other things. So it's really been um, a huge learning curve and a huge, I'm so grateful to be able to be part of this with them. Yeah. So, so um, the past couple of years have been difficult, obviously, with COVID. It's been really tough. I yeah. mean, in terms of um, the fact that some of it's been taking place online. And uh, when yeah. it comes to visual arts, or it just comes to the arts, you know, and you lose that one-on-one, -on -one, it's really, really difficult. But it's kind of exciting now. You're coming back to the Food yes. Bank this year, yeah. Yeah, this fall. So. Yeah, we managed through COVID. And actually, for the most part, um, we lost a few kids who couldn't handle the online thing. But for the most part, the kids adjusted. It was the volunteers. We were all like, oh, I'm not beside them. It, it's really hard. But the kids, they just wanted to still have that opportunity. So coming back this year, last year was kind of a wild year because almost all our families had never been in per person with us. So we had the challenge of we were still working with the space. COVID was still so prevalent. Yep. How do we balance all of that out? Um, and then we're hoping this year we'll be fully back engaged as we were pre-COVID. Yeah. And we'll have families that have experience being here in person. But again, great kids, great parents, great volunteers, and um, the people who donate and get involved are amazing. Yeah, that's great. Do you mind if we just walk around a no, little bit? Let's get no. some visuals. So yeah, come on, okay. let's go. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, so Karen, oh yeah. my goodness. You know, so now I'm behind the camera yeah, a little okay. bit, and this is going to be on you. But this is the art room. This is the art room. Um, and we, a number of years ago, um, for a sad reason, we had a family um, sent to us from London Community Foundation who lost their daughter. Hmm. And they wanted to do something in her memory, and they didn't know how much money they would raise, but they ended up giving us a significant amount of money. So uh, we painted all of our spaces here in the food bank. We color-coded the rooms so we could say to the kids, go to the pink room, find the pink room. So they could wander the hall and still find where they're supposed to go. But the art room is pink because the little girl... 
<laughs> the art room is pink because it was this little girl's favorite color, and she loved art. Oh, and was that Faith Tilk? That was Faith, Faith Tilk. Tilk. Yeah, and yeah. we have a plaque on the door oh, of the amazing. art room okay. with her picture. Okay. And so we have various things. We have um, drawers full of items. These are the bags that the kids get in the fall. This started with COVID, actually, and I love it so much we're going to keep it. And so they get art material, or if they're taking a piano lesson, their piano books come in, so they can bring them back and forth. And now I'm working on put your indoor shoes in here. <laughs> oh, it works really well. Oh, great. So there is there she is. Yeah. And to pull away, there's the art room door. Yeah. Oh, oh my I'll goodness. get out of the way. I'm yeah, going to close the door so you can see it. We had some university um, pre-med students come and do these doors. Oh, great. Which we thought was so much fun. So there's the art. There's the art door. And then here is the Beth Gervin Piano Studio. Yes. Oh. Beth Gervin was the executive director of London Community Foundation for years. And when she retired, um, she asked that her, instead of a physical gift, she asked the fund be created in her name, that the interest from that fund in perpetuity, as long as we exist, comes to Arts for All Kids. So this was our small way of thanking her for that. Oh, wow. So what have we got in here? We have lots of pianos. Oh, wow. Yeah. Now I know we're doing, there's some renos and there's some painting yeah. still to be done, but yeah. obviously you're preparing. So there's we pianos. Are. There are pianos and, and the kids, and there's the headphones. Head <laughs> so we'll, we'll come back to that room, but okay. show me the theory room. This is oh. kind of funky. <laughs> this is one of my favorite rooms. Um, so this is the theory space. So this carpet, again, came to us through the ACORN Fund at the Lennon Community Foundation. And when I applied for fun, and we have other, we play bingo, and we do all the theory is taught in hopefully a game fun way. So they don't really realize that they're learning skills and also to make it fun to be in there because they have to spend half their time yeah. instead of see me at the piano. Yeah. But that theory is what gives them the fundamentals a lot, yes. doesn't it? Yeah, and that's the idea. They do know maybe rhythm rhythm exercises, talk about time signature, all the stuff they need in the piano lab. Okay. Awesome. I know that's... So come on down this way again. Okay. Um, now this hasn't got a door on it, so I can't tell what it is. This is creative writing. Yeah. That's on the whiteboard. Yeah. Um, so this year we experimented, and the kids... Um, we experiment with the kids sitting on the floor yeah. because we were we thought well, we put a table and chairs it might be too close for it, but the teachers have actually asked for the table and chairs back <laughs> uh, mostly because the kids came in and laid down on the p pillows and then some of them were falling, falling asleep. asleep oh my yeah. goodness so that happens at work sometimes too doesn't yeah. it yeah <laughs> um, and so my volunteers are young people and they come in and they deliver the lesson as she's created it the kids loved it and this year was all about being a detective so were they were they writing their own stories yep. So, yep, I think I, let me have a look, because somebody's left their book here. Now well, this is, um, I'm going to cover up his name, but the child called himself Special Agent and then his name. Oh, wow. And so what are the, age of the ages of the kids that come? In the Monday program, it's age 7 to 12. Okay. So he, he obviously likes to write with drawings. He's going to become a graphic artist. Yeah. Yeah. And then they try to get them to do other stuff and um, question, archive, unsolved mysteries, uh, creative spelling, yeah. which is fine. It's creative writing. It's creative writing. And it's for wherever they're at. So some of our kids, then they're already starting to write stories there. Yeah. So, and this, he's actually filled oh, quite a bit of his book. So, That's great. Which is good. That's and the, great. And again, the goal is for them to be able to go home and continue it. Yep. So, okay, so this, this room. room. Um, so I wish this was a bigger room, but uh, this is Dr. Jane Shaughnessy. Uh, she is the daughter of a friend of mine who passed away a number of years ago and played violin as a young person. So uh -huh. her parents set up, uh, they make a donation every year that goes specifically to our string program. Okay. So, um, so this is... So Shoot. don't worry about what it looks like because we know okay. we're getting, we're okay. getting, this we know is our, getting ready our, for our instrument storage room, not just for the violins, but wow. also for, uh, we also got a generous donation from Music Counts in the fall of 2019. And so we redid all of our violins. That's actually a brand new piano lab. We got a beautiful brand new acoustic piano, all at the generosity of Music Counts. And the piano, the piano itself, we were just going to get 
um, a used one, but um, a couple came forward who are friends of ours and they said, no, we want you to buy a, a brand new, beautiful panel. So we, again, more people who the kids have no idea are supporting them in this. No, that's so. great. Okay, let's 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 head Keep on. Keep going. Okay. Yeah. Um, so let's stick with the um, musical theme. Okay. Um, so we'll go down to the guitar room. Yeah. That's so I will follow you to okay. the guitar room. There we go. They're the only ones that have a quiet corner. <laughs> so this is our guitar room door. Mm -hmm. And again, we had um, students from Western who were pre-med that came one Sunday afternoon. They spent all afternoon, they designed the doors and they painted them, so it was really oh, cool. That looks really fun. So yep. the other room is green, and this is a green room, so what do you, what do you call this? This room? is the lime green The lime green. So lime if you want to come here, you got to yeah. go to the lime green. Yeah. Yeah, wow. so, okay. um, so we have lots of guitars, and then this is where they have their lessons. And depending on what a child needs and how many volunteers we have, sometimes you'll find a um, musical theme. Okay. Um, so we'll go down to the guitar room. Yeah, That's so I will follow you to okay. the guitar room. There we go. They're the only ones that have a quiet corner. <laughs> So this is our guitar room door. Mm -hmm. And again, we had um, students from Western who were pre-med that came one Sunday afternoon. They spent all afternoon, they designed the doors and they painted them, so it was really oh, cool. That looks really fun. So yep. the other room is green, and this is a green room, so what do you, what do you call this? This room? is the lime green The room. lime green, so the lime if you wanna come here, you gotta yeah. go to the lime green. Yeah. Yeah, wow. so, okay. um, so we have lots of guitars, and then this is where they have their lessons. And depending on what a child needs and how many volunteers we have, and, but what they're asking the kids to do is just that little bit beyond what they're going to be able to achieve. And again, we want them, the kids to be having fun and having success as quickly as possible. Yeah, because a lot of this is meant to inspire the kids and if they're not necessarily enjoying it they're not going to right. they're and, not going to keep up with it you know and having chords and um and being able to accompany themselves and some of the kids like encourage them go write your own song if you use these three chords and in pop music it really is three or four basic chords if they can use those chords they can write a song so what we'll make sure we do at the end of the show is that we'll put up a little sign uh, and we'll talk about if somebody wants to volunteer Perfect. and is a Perfect. guitar teacher that they'll be able to get in touch and with And the time you. is great because we're looking for volunteers. And, yeah, yeah, so that's amazing. Wonderful. And other teachers as well. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll put the information yeah. there. Okay, so now we're walking down to the guitar room. Yep. And again, our university students painted the door. Mm -hmm. um, the guitar room actually is a memorial room. We had a volunteer, a teenage volunteer in high school. Um, I, I can't remember exactly when. And he came in, he kept coming up to me and saying, if you ever get guitar, I'll, I'd love to teach guitar. I'd love guitar. So he was with us for one session. <laughs> And actually, he kind of disappeared. And so we did that just as well. And we found out that over the Christmas holidays, he was in a really bad accident. Oh, no. So um, we, I got a call. He was living with his aunt and uncle. And the aunt called and said, you know, and the next day she phoned and said he died. Oh, okay. So it was a huge blow to the program. And everything centered around his guitar. And his family had decided to ask for all of the memorial donations to come to us. So I said to her, we will create a guitar program for Kevin. So this is because of Kevin Dan and because he loved, and you could just see the difference that that guitar made to this kid. That's so amazing. Yeah, very cool. So we'll, we can go in. So we work in the food bank, You're building a better food bank. So come and show me the dance room. <laughs> yeah, so this I'm is a multi-purpose room. Yeah. This is the food bank's um, kitchen, which right now, because we're not running, then the food bank kind of... We move in. You move in. Um, come <laughs> September, we'll be helping you to move out. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so you can see we have some ballet bars, one that has to be fixed, but we also have a mirrored wall. And this is where oh, the dancers come. There we go. And the, dan the mirrors are, hello. <laughs> the mirrors are there for the kids. To we, we were shocked at what a difference it makes for them to actually yep. be able to see themselves. And plus, our dance teachers are used to teaching with the kids behind them, but seeing them in the mirror. So uh, so they, so it's not kind of reverse image. They can no. just, and so yeah, that's good. So um, yeah. When we had, we did at one point have like 16 kids in a dance class and we moved them to a different space because this, they were whacking into each other and yeah. anyway, but so we just make use and 
we're grateful to the food bank, so we just make it work. You know, I've come to the food bank late at night sometimes when mm -hmm. the program's running, and in where we keep our produce or keep our milk and eggs, there's a number of kids playing violin. Yes, and it's because the food bank went through changes over COVID, so we, we couldn't figure out where we were gonna put the violin kids. And actually, it actually to me, it speaks to what this has always been, the kids just using the space that's there and understanding that you can do any, any art anywhere. Anywhere. <laughs> okay, so let's keep going. We're okay. gonna, we drama. passed the drama room. Yes. And again, this is a, another door painted by our university students. Yeah. So, and I want you to guess what color this room is. <sighs> Might be. Blue! <laughs> You've started so, a new program about musical theater. So yes. I, just, I just wanted to talk a little bit about that. Let's okay. go see the costumes and then let's, <laughs> if we could talk about that, that would sure. be wonderful. Right here that we haven't hooked up yet, but and we were getting tech ready. So we have a lot of costumes. We have tutus for our dancers who, and the kids, the, I, wish, I wish the teacher would warn me when she's bringing out the tutus so I could get the pictures because they're always like, oh, I'm so excited. Oh. <laughs> and like, I want this color. And, they, and then when they get up to dance, they look a lot more, look at me, right? It's yeah. just, it's wonderful to see for them. Yeah. So let's go back and let's talk about some of the the musical issues. theater, yeah, musical, yeah. musical theater, but also, you know, um, some of the issues okay. in terms of food. Okay, so we're back now after that little tour, which is great. So I guess two things. Let's talk uh, the musical theater program in terms of where that came about, and then let's talk about some of the other issues okay. around it. So the musical theater, uh, that was actually the original idea of the program, but I learned really quickly when I started that that wasn't going to work. But over the years, we had kids who would what we call age out because we only go to once they hit 13, then they weren't supposed to be with us. And most kids are too old for the program the way it's structured. But I would have kids standing in front of me crying. Can I, I stay? Yeah. Can I stay? This became a safe place, a home. It actually was where they had friends. And so um, when I retired a few years ago, in 2019, um, decided that I would like to go back to the original idea. So we tossed around how this would work because getting them to come consistently and put on a show, and also there's so many groups in town and schools doing shows. What we did know is that these kids have no training. So we created a musical theater training program for kids in grade seven and up. Yep. And we basically, they do vocal, dance, and acting. And what we do is we train them to audition. And so when we started, we had um, nine kids, which was great. And we had some university students who were the dance. I had an amazing dance teacher, plus some kids from the university. Um, our retired drama teacher came and did the acting part. And I actually did the vocal with the kids. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, COVID hit. So we took the kids online and they did very well. Um, I commissioned a young person to write a script for them that was specifically designed for online. She did an uh, amazing Janelle Williams, just amazing, amazing job. Um, and the kids did that, but they dropped off because it's, it's COVID and it's they, don't, COVID. they yeah. don't want to be online. Yeah. But basically it's meant to give the kids somewhere to go when they age out of this. So not all of them are interested in that. Um, we have a number of kids who, as an alternative, they wait till grade nine and then they ask to volunteer. So we actually have a number of kids involved that way. Um, but the musical theater, we had three kids involved in Broadway the Twist the last two years and they are musical theater kids from us. And they are proving that um, it works, like they are having success auditioning, although that's not the main thing. The main thing is what it does for them as individuals, but each one of them, you can see how much they've gained in confidence. So, um, and musical theater is something that I love, and obviously I did shows with my kids, so it was meant to be something extra for me. So we're hoping that this fall, we can be begin to really build back for that program. Yeah, so part of the, th so I work at the, Emma, could you see this? Um, so obviously, you know, heavily involved with the food bank. The food bank is here, and when we look at 
food and poverty issues. Oftentimes we talk about things like food deserts, yeah. right? Um, but I know you've been reading, I've been reading things about, you know, music and art deserts within the city. And it's more, it's, it's not specific to geography. It tends to be specific other ways. But can you talk a little bit about just what the impact that arts has overall on a child's life. Um, arts and education, particularly when education isn't necessarily supported and kids don't go there. I know that's, I, you know, when we talk about what keeps you up at night, I know this is one of the things particular, it's your passion. So. Yeah, that's a big subject. Um, <clears throat> I, as a retired teacher, I do know that, and it's a, a personal thing, that when we are in uh, I'll say financial straits and people are tightening the budget, the very first place they go to cut is in the arts. And yet they're concerned about kids' mental health and keeping kids um, safe mm -hmm. and um, to deal with their own personal growth. Like I, we do believe the arts are a growing up necessity. Mm -hmm. um, we believe in kids being physically active, <laughs> but nobody talks about the artistic aspect of it. And some of it is physical. But um, So what keeps me up is the fact that there are so many studies about what the arts do for a kid, and yet they are those studies are ignored. And so when we're looking at budget, and I understand that yeah. everything has to be on the table. I would not want to be in their shoes. But I don't understand why it's the first thing you look at. Are there other ways that you could save the money that you need? Or are there ways to deliver the programming? And it directly impacts, mostly, um, disadvantaged kids. Um, because they are already in a setting where there's not a lot of money at home and whether that's they are the working poor or or they are on social assistance those kids do not have the same opportunities those kids those kids are already at a disadvantage beyond just the financial situation um, and I was speaking with someone even today about this, is that my experience with um, socioeconomically disadvantaged kids is that the area they are most efficient in is creativity mm. and imagination. Um, they've not grown up in a circumstance where the materials are provided or their parents are so busy just trying to make ends meet that the kids never are in an environment where they are required to draw on, on their own personal creativity or imagination. Um, they tend to take things that they've already seen and it takes a long time for them to come up with, quote, an original idea. It also takes a long time for them to recognize that they actually love this and that's okay. Um, and it can mean the difference between a kid being successful in life um, and not. It can mean the difference between a kid who enhances their own life experience regardless of financial situation. Um, and it does mean there is a direct link between kids who end up in trouble with the police yep. and involvement in the arts. They need an outlet and um, I know that in the musical theater thing, like teenagers are full of angst all the time, right? So having a, a, a safe place to, this is my angst and this is what it is. Um, but also how could they imagine a different life if they are never taught how to use their imagination? So I think that what keeps me up is the knowledge that, and I know it's not the only thing, of course food is and shelter, but if they don't have these, then we need more than, we need more than just that in order to help lift people out of what they're in. Yeah. I always tend to think of it a lot of, you know, basic needs, food, shelter in particular. Yes. I mean, that's how we live. Yes. The arts, creativity, love, that's why we live. Yes. And, you know, I, I, I definitely agree with the way that we learn is by copying others. Mm -hmm. And if we don't have those resources or we don't yes. see, we can't copy others, right. then it's difficult for us to learn that love. And it's also difficult for us to fall to express the angst or the emotions we have, because that's a lot of what the arts are all about. Yeah. Right? Um, so thank you, Karen. Actually, that, you. those are amazing individual stories. Um, they become part of a community as well. Mm -hmm. um, arts for All Kids is one of the organizations in town which is trying to provide yes. uh, the arts towards. So that that's that's great. I am so happy you're coming back in person. It makes all the difference. Thank and you. I do love leaving work. And as I leave, the kids are coming in, or the, the teachers, the volunteers are coming in, and just the passion with, yeah. that, with which can, they bring is great. You can feel it. Yeah. You can feel it. So thank you. And thank you for, what, 35 years? It's coming into 35 years. That's, we finished 34, we're going into 35. <laughs> yeah, 35 years. I mean, and it's, it's kind of two sessions. You have the fall session, and then and you have the spring session. That's right. You know, And the fact that you're retired and still doing this is, is like amazing and wonderful. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you. From, I appreciate thank that. Thank you from the community. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for highlighting the kids. Yeah.